minus 20 seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Hello, hello. Welcome back to Tiny Treasures 3D Print and Paint. Today, we are taking a look at the Voron 2.4, the Blue Rolls kit from, uh, this is the Blue Rolls kit from Blue Rolls. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, apparently this is the 350 by 350. I haven't opened the box yet. There are so many things inside of this. It's incredibly, incredibly heavy. It, for, the, for the interests of legality, Blue Rolls sent us this kit. We did not pay for it. However, we did pay the shipping and import tax, and that sucks. Um, the contents is uh, is from, as I say, it's all from Blue Rolls. Uh, I haven't opened the box yet, so we don't know what's in it. The opinions, however, of myself and certainly of Nero uh, have absolutely nothing to do with Blue Rolls. Uh, they are our own, and we'll see whether or not we hate it and whether or not they massively waste their money sending us a giant printer. <laughs> so, introductions. Nero 3D, the voice of... Hello. Oh, the, Nero, guy the, the guy who makes for it. The guy who makes The guy who makes so many, for, so much more on <laughs> content. So before we get started, let's do a little bit of an introduction and background around Voron. So, Nero, you, you're the man who knows. So why don't you give <laughs> us a little bit of, of, of a history about how Voron came to be? Okay, so for those unfamiliar, I do a lot of Voron stuff, but I am not the creator of Voron. I'm just a guy on the team who happens to make videos. So Voron started around five years ago now uh, by a man named Russian Cat Food. Uh, Bax, uh, if you know him on the Discord, he uh, started well off with the Core XY printer, a nice design, and it's grown over the years. Uh, a little over three years ago, the V2 came out, which is the fancy one with the quad gantry leveling and all that. And that's usually when you think of a Voron, that's the Voron. But they're all open source printers. The Voron Design Group is a Voron Design team. It's a design group. We we don't build printers. We design printers. We put the designs out there, and if people want to build them. They build them. So you, you can't buy a built Voron, you build a Voron. So I've been on with the team about three years now. Uh, built my first printer was a V1, which is now a V2, the tall boy back there. And now I've got six, I think. I don't know. I just finished this one the other day. So they, they multiply quick once you start building Vorons. So, so there's a fair few machines different. in your lineup, isn't there? So you've got the 2.4, yes. which is the yes, newest Core XY. Technically, the 2.4 is actually the oldest Voron right now. The oldest current revision of a Voron. There's five different Vorons. Uh, there's the V0, the V1, the V2, the switch wire, and the Legacy. So the first one out was the V1. Yeah. That's this one right here. This is a V1.8. So the name isn't version. So it's not Voron version 1, version 2. The V1 is the name. It's a it's a Voron 1. It's a Voron 2. It's a Voron 0. That's That's the name. Right. So it doesn't imply which one's better or whatnot. So this is the V1.8. This is the newest revision of the V1. It's a traditional Core XY. You got your fixed gantry up top. The bed moves up and down. Um, the next one that came out was the V2, which is the flying gantry, quad gantry leveling thing. The gantry between the V1 and V2 is actually the same. The only difference on the V2, it moves up and down versus the bed moving on the V1. Um, the V0 came out after. It's this tiny little guy, just a little pocket Core XY printer. It's a traditional Core XY fixed gantry moving bed, um, but it's tiny and everyone loves this thing. This thing has taken off. It's only a design been out for over a year now, and there's already like almost 600 serials of this thing. Um, and at that point, naming got confusing because the newest printer was a zero. So we actually started naming the printers. Um, so we have the switch wire, which is a Core XZ printer. Uh, so it's a Cartesian printer. So your bed moves front and back, and your gantry moves up and down, but it's it's Core XZ. There's no lead screws. It's basically a Core XY gantry vertical. So you don't need to worry about things like lead screw wobble. Um, when you're running a bed mesh, it's actually quiet because your both your motors are always running in a Core XY or in this case a Core XZ system. So if you've ever run a bed mesh with a lead screw printer and you constantly hear your Z motors kind of do that er, 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 noise, yeah, you don't get that with that. It's Core XZ, um, and it's super fast for Z too because you can move your Z as fast as your X. Um, and then the legacy, that's the one I actually don't have. 
The Legacy is a throwback to the early original Voron design with uh, rods and bearings and whatnot. So it's kind of like a resto mod where if you take the old design, but add all the creature comforts that the modern printers have, like bed probes and changeable tool heads and all that stuff. So they're all open source printers. You can go to vorondesign.com. You can download the files for them. The whole bill of materials is there. Sourcing guide to help you find some suggested components. Uh, but now kits are new and uh, companies are making them. I built a, an LDO kit. And you guys have a Blue Rolls kit that we're going to be taking a look at, it looks like. We do indeed. So I have to, so so I've been checking out the Boron kits for a while. Um, I've been sort of silently stalking the Facebook group, watching to see how many people have set things on fire and how many haven't. Um, so uh, there's, because there, there's, as you said, you can't buy a Voron. I think the closest thing you can buy is Formbot do something called the Tradoon, I think. The, tr the Trodon, Tradoon, that? That's it, yeah. Close, but no cigar. Yeah, so th that's been around for a few years now. Uh, when they originally came out, we did reach out to them and they put their little disclaimer saying inspired by Voron. That thing is a weird... It, it's They took a V1 or V2.0 and a 2.1, mashed them together, and then made a commercialized version of that. So it, it's it's its own thing. It's its own yeah. thing. Yeah, it's... it's, it's it, it's a bit like um, so. Creality Inspired. and Lulzbot have done it, where for some reason they decided to create their own Cura, um, yeah, where they it's... created their own branch of Cura. And what it is is a garbage fire, and it is it is terrible <laughs> compared to regular Cura. Well, I'm not saying regular Cura is the perfect piece of software, but it is actively developed, and they do keep coming out with new versions that explode in new and hilarious ways. But at the same time. <laughs> The last time Lulzbot updated it was, what, the third time they went bankrupt two years ago? It's like, yeah. I, don't, I don't understand what the purpose is. And the same goes with that Formbot thing. It sort of, it begs the question as to what, what's the point when you could have just done the kit and, and, and made, like, the same amount of money yeah. uh, or more yeah. money even? It seems like they created a lot of dev for themselves. Yeah, so, and, anyway. and it's completely on its own. So if anything yeah, up again, happens with the morons, you so can't. Much. You can't stop yeah, it's anything. deviated so much at this point that even if they wanted to take inspiration from the new versions of of, uh, of the Vorons, a challenge they've deviated so much at this point they'd have to re-engineer basically everything from the ground up anyway. At which point, what's the what's the purpose? So, with this Blue Rolls kit, I've got the bill of materials here. Uh, it is extensive. There's a great many things in here. Uh, the thing I liked about the Blue Rolls kit is the claim, and again, we'll verify that once we're inside, is that you get a lot of proper brand name stuff. This isn't you doing a Voron on the cheap. This isn't you going out and buying as many generic parts as you possibly can. Theoretically, in here, there are Gates belts and there are LDO motors and there's Meanwell power supplies and all of that good stuff. So you have a degree of... Yeah, in, in, in theory. Uh, so you can have a degree of sort of confidence about the parts that you're buying rather than when you buy, a, I don't know, when you buy a, a, an Ender 3 or a, or a Creality like CR6 or something and it's made from melted down tin cans and sort of motors that everyone else has thrown away. Do we have enough nuts? So it's a tradition on this channel that every single time I build anything, I get a bag of nuts and I drop them all on the floor at some point. <laughs> and then I have to spend four days trying to find them all. It's worse now because I'm in the garage. So because I've now put the studio in the garage, there's so many interesting places that nuts can end up. <laughs> I still so have many new uh, places. ferals. I, I dropped a, a container of all the ferals um, yeah. a couple of weeks ago, and I'm still finding them. Yeah. So. Right. So without further ado, let me see about – let's get this bad boy open. So – So I'm hoping that it's packed nicely as well, because it'd be terrible if it was a bunch of genuine stuff and then everything broke on its trip over from China. Yeah, I'm assuming they use the same method as the form bot, which it looks like they did where it's kind of tiered and... and yeah, packed. so we've got our initial drag chains. Do they open? We've been those for about a month. Are they openable drag chains? PFTA tube? But like translucent pfte tube yep it's for the reverse okay. odin 
Oh, okay. All right. It, it just looks cool. Oh, many, many extrusions. So, again, the claim from Blue Rolls is that these are Mitsumi, uh, Mitsumi extrusions. Which That's going to be hard to verify. Look at the extrusion where the slot is and see if there's a little notch. If it's a hard shop corner, it's Mitsumi profile at least. But if you see a little notch, that's uh, that's your generic alley profile. Yeah, I don't know. Like, let me see if I can find some. Yeah, of course I have it. Well, here. anyway. Yeah, I, I don't, don't know. Really if think, able to see. I don't really think Mitsumi uh, extrusions are going to make or break the build, but no, they're not. They're not the things that I'm interested in. The things that I'm interested in are here. So these are supposed to be genuine high win rails they certainly have the serial numbers that would match high win rails so what we've seen with high win rails is um the carriages tend to be legit um it's the right. rail themselves that is uh suspect so usually it tends to be legit high wind carriages but it's the rails that's uh if he so, I mean again, I mean I'm not I'm not under the illusion that um the the only rails that are any good are are high winds and everything oh, else. God no. So I've said before we've said before on different on, on different builds as well, it comes down to tolerances. Yep. Right? So the tolerance well, on builds, cheap, Yeah. yeah tolerance on the cheap thing would be one step two. for yeah. Yeah, so it's you know it's it, it, a tolerant tolerance for a cheap thing would be between one and two, and that's a relatively large variance. Whereas the tolerance for an expensive thing is between one point three and one point six. Yeah, it's, it's a three D printer. There's no forces on the tool head or anything, and the, yeah. there's not a lot of moving mass really. So as long as your rails aren't you know sloppy as all heck and the bearings move, you're pretty much good enough. So we it. have many. Many, many bags of nuts and knobs and bolts and screws. I'm going to take it as red that whatever it says is on the bill of materials is what's here because some of these are like, <laughs> some of these are something like 217 M38. So I shan't be <laughs> counting them. Yeah. Um, so these, so, okay. So uh, this is something that was asked on at least two of my posts. How does this compare to the Rat Rig V3? Um, excellent question, Paul. So I don't have a Rat Rig V3. Um, it's worth noting that Rat Rigs started out building camera rigs. They never actually intended to build 3D printers. Um, and then uh, and then they moved into that. They moved into that space and made it part of their core business. But I what I that. found really interesting about the Voron is that so there's no lead screws. It's all belt driven, even on all the Zs. And you have these big machined aluminium pulleys that go over the four Z motors that are on this, that um, that like that that move the gantry independently on all four Z. Is that right? On the V two, yes. So you have four independent Z motors on the V two um, that are belted through a gearbox to move your gantry up and down. That way, you can independently adjust each corner. So. Here we have one of the first branded boxes. So this is the Voron kit. Oh, yeah, that, that actually in focus. Yeah, that looks LDO. Looks uh, pretty LDO to me. That being said, I've never seen genuine ones, so I've no way to verify that. Yeah. So let's <laughs> open this. Up. Let me see if I can find. Generically saying that there is definitely a uh, with belts. There's no Z bang. They come with their own set of troubles. I don't think any design is perfect. Anything comes with some degree of uh, oh, some yeah. degree of limitations. But so let's just take a look at these. Okay, so we've got four big ones, two medium ones, and a little one. So these motors. Oh, they are. Look, so they're even branded on the back there. So we've actually got. Looks pretty. Uh, someone's gone to an awful lot of effort if they're not genuine. Yeah, they look pretty legit. Uh, let me see if I can find some mine. Yeah. 
So the only thing that, um, that sort of struck me with these, or strikes me as I, as I look at them, sorry, is that the cables for the stepper driver, a stepper motor, are integral to the motor. On so all of them? If you're, if, on all, uh, well, oh, no, not on all of them, sorry. On what I'm assuming is X and Y and E motor yep. they are. And then on Z, they're pluggable. Yep, that should be correct, because I'm like the big chunky ones are separate. And then your yeah. X, um, I think the X, are they 0.9s? 1.8 on the Zs. Oh. And then 0 0.9 on what I'm assuming is the X and the Y. Yeah. And a 1.8 on the E. Yeah. And yeah, so your X, Y and your extruder motor will be fixed wires and i just checked mine uh build that i just built using the ldo motor kit and it's the same so that should be a legit kit well look at that and then we have what are, okay so before we open the box of goodies these are square things oh corner brackets okay so meanwhile power supply Okay. Oh, yes. There we yeah. go. Yeah. Branded as mean well, at least. Passively cooled. Interesting. Yep. Yeah. No, like actually cooling watt. on that. Is that right? Yeah, you only need 200 watts. Like, it's only 200 watts, so they're passively cooled. Oh, okay. Yeah. Fair play. I suppose the as well, the because more... the bed is mains powered, Yeah. and the Pi is separately powered, yeah. you're not actually even powering... You're not even powering the bed, because the bed's going straight through the mains. It's not coming from, yeah. the, it's not coming from the power supply, so... That's good. I, I know people that have gotten away with 150 watt power supply in a V2. Yeah, it, you're only powering the motors in the hot end, really. I have the, the real bore on. <laughs> right. So, yes. So, as we suspected, the bed is a generic silicone pad. It's not a Kevnovo. Uh, it's a 220, wow. 750 watt. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, that's pretty generic. It says, is it 468 MP on the back? It's an excellent question. It doesn't say where if it does. Oh, oh it, yeah, be all over it. No. Oh, oh, yeah, sorry. 468 MP, yep. Okay. So at least the adhesive is correct. Um, you want to roll the dice? <laughs> that's the only thing. One we of those we things we know Kinovos work, and we don't know of anyone that's had any problems with them, so that's why we recommend them. Versus yeah. generic, who knows brand off AliExpress. So yeah, so this is the spring steel removable sheet with three hundred L SE adhesive. Yep, that sounds but, right. I mean, it's not a it's not a uh, textured one. It doesn't look like it. Well, no, sorry. It's got the PEI coating, it looks like. Okay, just sticker. Personally, I'm a fan of just the sticker PEI on the spring steel because it's easier to replace if you wear it out. Oh, no, I will right. eventually wear it out. So it is a textured, sorry. Oh, sorry. It's a smooth steel sheet. Yep. It's got that gold sheen to it. So uh, does it say it. energetic on it? Is it? Do they go with an energetic one like the form bots? It would say in the middle. Right. It does not say anything in the middle. It's completely blank, unbranded. Okay. So it's just an unbranded one. Okay. Uh, it's just, uh, another generic one there. Then we come on to the 8 mil thick piece of aluminium. Now, I don't have a granite worktop to be able to put this on to know that it is uh, sort of Rick and Morty level of level. But uh, <laughs> two level. True level. I mean, I could stand on it and then see whether or not I freak out like Morty does, but I think that would probably be a <laughs> gross misuse of the, of the equipment, and, uh, <laughs> and I think Blue Rolls might ask for their stuff back. So, <laughs> right, let's get into the goodie box. So, this separate box here. So, what have we got to begin with? So, these are brushless deltas. So, I was under the impression these were supposed to be Sunan fans. Uh, if they're 24 volt, um, I haven't come across a legit Sunon 24 volt fan. No? No. Maybe I was making that up then. 
So uh, that, so, so that to be fair, sense. on the bill of materials, it just says axle fan and blower fans. It doesn't even say yep. what they would be on that. These are and, these are Delta Electronics Incorporated. So those are the bigger yeah. ones. So those are probably for the electronics enclosure. So you're you're probably yeah. fine. Like, honestly, yeah. I run GD Stein fans, like generic GD Stein fans off AliExpress on all my printers. Right. So this is just double sided sticky tape. Uh, that would be your foam tape, actually, for the uh, panels. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. Oh, what? Like yeah. acoustic paneling? Yeah. So what you do is on your panels, you put um, a run of that around all the outside edges so that when you right. put it against the frame, one, it prevents it rattling, and two, it seals it up better. So it keeps the fumes and the heat oh, inside I better. I like the sound of that. So this is one of, or a couple of, actually, the belts. The claim is that these are Gates belts. Now I do not know how you tell the difference between gate belts and generic belts, but they're they would be labeled. There, we're finding there is it's easy enough to get gates over in in China. Like you can get gates belts off AliExpress. They have gates has a manufacturing facility for the Asian market over there. So when you're buying gates right. off AliExpress, for the most part, they are gates. Um, so if they if they have gates and they're labeled gates, odds are they are gates. Kingston 32 gig SD card. There's no specific reason to think that that's not real. Uh, okay, so start off some wiring. So if I remember rightly, when it came to wiring on this, it said there was like 65 feet of something. Yeah, the 350, uh, you're going to need a lot of wire. Yeah. So it says here, the 24 gauge, apparently there's 64 feet of 24 gauge in there and 10 feet of 20 gauge well okay. i don't know what 24 feet or what 60 feet of cable looks like but i'm going to go out on a limb and say that it's not that um right this is i think this is 20 meters what's 20 meters in feet uh probably uh, what i don't know feet. like three three feet so 60 feet 65 70 feet oh, okay yeah all right, I'll stand corrected. Then maybe yeah. it is. All right, okay. Well, anyway, we've got that. It, it's surprisingly small. Like it, it spools up quite a bit. Yeah. All right. So first fan is Adder A D D A and Penga. So I mean, generic. Fans. <laughs> yeah, they're just generic. <laughs> gen gen generic -y fans. I, I'm kind of lucky. My printers have their own room in the basement, so fan noise doesn't really concern me too much. So I just buy the cheapest fans that I know work. Yeah, um, and I, I mean, providing that the noise. case fans aren't too loud, I don't find that the fans that go on hot ends are that savage. No. Like they, and once you enclose everything, yeah, plus yeah. You're anyway, so you're cutting down a lot of that. Right. Noise. So sensor. Oh, yeah, it's is the jong or something. Christ. It is, yeah, something like that. Zong, Zong, yeah. GDE, something. Yep, yeah, that's the generic one. They work. Yeah. Um, the problem with those cheap uh, probes is it'll either die in three weeks or it'll last you three years. Some work forever, <laughs> and some just die. Right. Um, yeah. Heat cartridge and cartridge thermistor again i mean are these don't look like they're branded are they yeah they're probably just generic Things on the cartridge there the triangle labs ones do say triangle labs on the cartridge yeah no it's not a triangle labs one right what do we got next so this is apparently genuine bond tech gears and it specifically labels them as such on the uh, on the uh, bill of materials. I would expect Bontech to maybe put a little sticker on that if it was real. So it's a possibility. I know LDO works with Bontech to include uh, Bontech gears in their Galileo kits. So if they right. have LDO motors, there's a potential they kind of work together to get those. Um, okay. As long as you they look at them, and they look pretty well machined. They should be fine. Most of us do run the um, like Triangle Labs Bontech gear kits in our afterburners. Um, actually, I don't have any after. Oh no, I got the LDO kit came with legit Bontech gears, I believe. Yeah. My V zero. Okay. So I've got that. You should be okay. suction cuppy feet. 
Yep, compressor feet. Couple of end stops, nice and generic. Yep, that's all you need. Another one. Fetus Dragon Hot End. Now that looks legit to me. Yeah, that is so uh, that is a nice finish. and holographic on the fetus logo. That looks as real as it's going to get. A thingy. That is for attaching your SSR to the DIN rail. It acts as a heat sink too. Okay. SSR. What brand the you SSR get? SSR is a Fotec. Okay. How many amps is it rated for? Ten. Okay. So. If it's coming from AliExpress, it's probably not a legit <laughs> tech. Um, so when it comes to those generic SSRs, they do work. I've used them in the past, um, but you got to understand they're usually underrated or overrated. So your bed, you're probably only pushing five amps. A 10 amp, you're probably okay. But I used to run 40 amp once on my beds before I started using like cryons. I'm trying to remember what we put on the Sidewinder. Because I think we put a 34. A 30 on the sidewinder. Yeah, it, it's yeah. usually good to just over spec the hell out of it with you yeah. when you have a question. Uh, not off the top of my head, no. Yeah, I can't say that. Excellent. We did all see your ass crack then, so that was really nice. Thanks for that. That was a treat. <laughs> <laughs> Always get the nice surprises on this channel. Uh, right, so Raspberry Pi, two gig RAM model. It's Pi yeah, four, but oh, it's Pi enough. four. That's not bad. Honestly, so Pi three, Pi four, you're not going to really notice much of a difference, if any. Yeah, bunch of jumpers, bunch of cable ties, uh, thingy, a power brick. Thing and some more gears and springs. Uh, what are those ones for? That's weird. So we have extruder gears and springs and some more springs and gears. Let's see if I can... Hold on, let me focus the camera up so you can actually see what they are. Do, 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 do. So this bag is extruder gears and everything and then this one has got oh, it's, it's all the same it should all be in one bag but they have it oh, in two. okay all right fair enough yeah that's less exciting than i was expecting it to be all right. <laughs> fair enough we come on to teeny tiny power supply also branded as mean well i assume this is the five volt for raspberry pi yep so we, we, we spec those because those are only, honestly, if you buy them off, like, here in North America, if you get them off um, DigiKey or whatever, they're only, like, 10 or 15 bucks, and yeah. it's a high-quality power supply. So everyone knows Raspberry Pis are really finicky with power supplies. So instead of using a wall wart or a buck converter, 10 or 15 bucks, you can get a, a proper, dedicated, well-rated power supply that will you'll never have issues with. Screen. Screen looks like it's a real big tree because you even get a big tree branded duck. There you go. I'd be surprised if you weren't getting a real big tree, right? Is it a it does seem very. Oh no! Yeah, it's big tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does seem a bit odd that you get this size screen on a machine of this scale. Well, it's <laughs> it's running Clipper, so with Clipper. Right. Not many touchscreens are compatible just because of the way Clipper works and it's it's running on the Raspberry Pi and it has to talk through things. So right now when it comes to touchscreens, there is Clipper screen is an option uh, where you have to use a touchscreen that connects to the Raspberry Pi itself. Um, I have a panel do running on one of my printers. The panel do does yeah. work with the um, Clipper as well. And I think the Creality touchscreens are now functional. But beyond that, there really isn't much choice for screens. And most of the time, we're running our printers through a computer with, you know, main so, sale so, or fluid or Octodash. So if you wanted to use Octodash, does Octodash not work with Clipper? Um, if you use an Octoprint, you, I believe it works fine. But I suppose when you're using the Pi, you're not using Octoprint, are you? You're using... Well, Octo else. okay, so if you're running Clipper, 
Clipper is controlling the printer, but you still need an interface. So you can use right. either Octoprint as your interface, or you can yeah. use the standalone interfaces, uh, Fluid or Mainsail. The problem with Fluid and Mainsail, while they're very lightweight, very they're very good for Clipper because they're designed specifically for Clipper, they have no plug-in support because of right. the way they're designed. They're designed to run so like right on Clipper. And you get what you're given. Yeah. So yeah. personally, I run my printers very lightweight with no add-ons. Um, and for me, a screen on my printer is, I use it to like unload filament at most or just move the tool head yeah, around at most. Yeah, so like this build doesn't have a screen. This build doesn't have a screen. Um, I, I just rebuilt Tallboy with a new controller. I haven't even plugged in the screen yet and I've been using it for right. a while. So I, I have a computer right here. And with Clipper, you, you can just pull out your phone and just use your phone as a controller if you want. So. All right, let's very quickly have a look at some of the comments here. So, <laughs> where do you live? I'm assuming that's not a national. That's not. That's not a social security question. I think that's like a, a generic. A generic level will be sufficient. <laughs> no. Hmm? Where do you live? Oh me. Oh sorry. Yeah. I, I thought that question was you. I live in Canada. Southern Ontario. There we go. Right. Uh, yeah, fine. Yeah. How would you? Yeah. So, so the main question really is going to be, how how do you think it compares to the Rat, Rat Rig V3? I'm going to be honest to say that because I've not used the Rat Rig, I, I can't really comment. But I don't, as I haven't I don't built if, this yet, I definitely can't. <laughs> I don't know if that question is a joke. Like, is it like if it's a serious like it? Pro, like. If it is a serious question, serious question. But I have seen that question asked in so many printer live streams lately that I think right. it's kind of become a, a mean oh, question man. to ask. Because I so, people uh, ask me so, too, and I keep saying like, I don't have one. How can you? I compare it to something I yeah. don't have. So I think the problem is is that especially when it comes to kit builds, um, people there, there, there are a decent amount of different kits to choose from right there's the heboards yeah. there's the hypercubes there's the blvs there's the borons there's rat rigs rail core, rail cores and the list goes on and on and on um and then there's variations of each one of those as well the i think the difference with the voron with with the voron build is that almost every machine is customized in some specific way so oh. so it, it, i don't i don't know how many generic level vorons you 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 actually find versus people who have built them to fulfill a specific like they put a high flow hot end on or they've gone for they've gone for you know high temp they're, they're, they're printing it with high temp materials or they've gone with a switch wire or they've gone with the afterburner or they've done you know some level of customization to it to suit their specific needs i feel like there's a bit more tinkering with the voron side than there is necessarily with the likes of blvs and I, things like that yeah because there there is the five printer so there's five warons to choose from um they have different options for like extruders most of them you can run either a direct feed setup with like the afterburner or a bowden setup with an m4 or any other bowden drive you want yeah. um but when it comes to building if you go like on the voron discord and look at the uh, like most people just only submit serial requests on the discord um, most people build their first ones pretty close to spec. Um, you might see people, you know, there's different hot end options, obviously, and you, you're buying the components themselves, but most Voron builds, the first ones are pretty much spec builds. Um, you're not seeing people do like, oh, hey, I, I built mine using 3040 extrusions and MGN 15 rails. Like you, you don't really see a lot of that kind of builds. Right. But. Again, you're all self-sourcing everything for the most part. So I think the rat yeah. rig, um, you pretty much go and you buy a rat rig kit from rat rig, right? Like you, most yeah. people aren't self-sourcing those at all. I don't believe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So drivers are 2209s, but these yep. say that they're S2209s. Uh, what controller did the kit come with? It is. Or controllers. The Vice Tech Spider version. Okay, came one. with the Spider. Um, oh, all my step sticks are in there. Um, does the step stick look like it has a little whale on it for the uh, where the heat sinks stick on? The step oh. stick. Uh, yeah, a little bit. Okay, if it looks like it has a whale on it, those are the right ones. Okay. 
Yeah, it should have, you should see the little blowhole at the top. Yeah, oh yes. And that, that's yeah. a little uh, a little Easter egg because somebody commented that the little silk screen looked like a whale. <laughs> right. So does that mean that they are I mean they're obviously TMC drivers, but Yeah. So okay. TMC drivers, um, for the TMC 2209s, for the most part, they are all legit TMC drivers. It's just the PCBs are different from different manufacturers. Um, I'm running a Spider in uh, my one small V2 here, um, and I haven't had issues. Um, apparently got to clean the contacts, though. I don't know. Yes, so I've seen this. So for anyone yeah. uh, for anyone thinking of doing this, there's there's a couple of options on mainboard. So there's the, there's the Octopus. Is that the big tree one? Yeah, so since it's Clipper, you can really use any controller board you want or multiple yeah. controller boards. But the, yeah. the spec controller is still technically either an SKR 1.3 or 1.4. The problem is those are being discontinued. So now there's the SKR 2, um, which I have one in my V1 build. So you could use two of those. Um, or you can use an octopus. Or you can use a spider. And the team itself, we haven't decided on which one will be the quote unquote official spec one because yeah. there's people are having issues with th some and others and none of them are perfect. And so this for is those what happens people when you're wondering about the issues, I had a little read up. Apparently, this board has been eating people's 2209 drivers um, and the claim. Oh, sorry, it's, 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 there's an over voltage issue. Yeah, is it's it? frying the three the three volt rail, I think, is getting fried. It's yeah. the SKR2, the original revision of the SKR2 that was blowing up drivers. Right, okay. Um, the Octopus, so, I haven't heard anything, though. So the Octopus right. so far has been <laughs> So the Octopus good. is still looking for the... I was asking about the road because I'm thinking of going down a Corex, right? So, yeah. So, Paul, t t to be fair, I, I think I actually saw someone the other day did do a Voron with a tool changer. Yes, sir. If you Google, go on YouTube and search uh, Voron tool changer mod... Um, I can't remember what it's called, but somebody has done a, a mod for it or is currently working on one. Yeah. I can't remember what it's called, um, unfortunately. So, so I've built the BLV cube. Um, we built one. It's the one that's behind Mike. Uh, that went, uh, okay. Um, we had some we had some issues. <laughs> varying degrees. <laughs> varying degrees of all right. I bought the wrong size extrusions. Um, so, uh, so, like, so that uh, that didn't help. But the, the machine itself is 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 good. I, I quite like the BLV. Um, that being said, it's now so the BLV is now all oh, three years old without too much of a change. It's kind of a finished project from Ben Levi at this stage. If he was to design anything else, it would be a new machine. Whereas the Voron is being actively developed and worked on by a team of people um so uh so personally i would be more inclined to go down the voron route if i was starting again from scratch yeah so how how the voron team kind of works there's the team's actually quite large but it, it's more honestly at this point now it's more of like a think tank or a cabal where there's a bunch of people on the team somebody will start working on something and that'll get abandoned and then somebody will start working on something else and then a bunch of people hop in and test and they're like oh hey is this kind of is this releasable? Is this not? Should we roll it in with something? Should we, is it gonna? Is it worth continuing on? So it's basically a bunch of side projects internally. Some stuff gets released, some stuff doesn't. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's uh, at the end of the day, it's a bit more federated with um, with with Voron in the sense that it's a, a first among equals. There's no one specifically. I mean, I, I know we've you said that the uh, sort of the original creator. Um, it's yeah. still it's still definitely a part of this. Oh yeah, um, but, but it's it's sort of run yeah, by so like, committee, I suppose, um, the way to describe it. Kind of like the 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 V zero is by a guy named Nemgria on the team. Russian Capu did start the design, but Nemgria pretty much redid it all and took it home. And he's like, he's the guy for the V zero. Um, right. The V two, the switch wire, and the legacy are pretty much Russian cat food. Um, the V one. Well, the V1.8 is Eddie the Engineer, and Steve is doing a bunch of work on the update to that. That will be whenever that's done. Um, so it's, it's a bunch of guys just work. I've kind of fiddled with some stuff that's never seen the light of day because um, I've been on the team three years. I figure at some point I should actually contribute something other than making videos. But uh, one day I'll, I'll see a project through. <laughs>
Right now, so um, Russian cat food's like playing around with CNCs, for example. So. Yeah, a, a weird thingy. What does the weird thingy do? That is a thermal fuse. So there should be a number on that. Oh, now you're asking. Yeah, two fifty, like uh, two fifty volt, fifteen amp, one hundred twenty five degrees. Okay, so you're gonna attach that to your bed. If your bed gets to one hundred twenty five degrees, that's gonna kill the kill the circuit. Oh, okay. So you wire that in line with the live line going to the bed. And that's your safety cutoff if your bed, if your SSR decides to fail and your bed decides to have a runaway. Because unfortunately with an SSR, they fail in a way a lot of the time where power will just keep going through and your bed will just keep heating up. So we yes. expect so, a 125 one because the adhesive starts to get funky around 120 Celsius. Right. Okay. So, so that you don't is want to use 115 because if you accidentally, you know, you, you, you fat finger in trying to heat up your bed to 120, and you pop it and then you got to rewire it. So, one twenty five seems to be a good safe one. So we have one, two din rails, and then, then we have panels. So, just make sure you double check the thickness of those before you print out your uh, panel pieces. There we go. Well, that's a bit late because they're all printed out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, oh. yeah. That's it, Marcel. <laughs> well, hopefully they're hopefully there's, there's there's for anybody else who actually checks stuff. I like that. <laughs> so, unlike with the kit you did, these are these have got covers on both sides. They have got the polythene. Do you remember the one that you did? Like you took out the panel and it was all scratched to shit. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. Not with this one. So uh, where are oh, oh, I've put everything on top of my calipers? Oh no! <laughs> oh, there we go. Right. So yeah, because those are acrylic. Three mil. So three mil. You should be okay. Yeah, you should be okay. Yeah, three mil. For... Yeah, because it's designed spec for I believe ABS panels for the bottom and the back, and then acrylic on the side. And yeah, it's, I think it's like, to yeah. be fair. So, so the black that. ones are the, uh, uh, the cut one there. There one. I'm assuming that means that one's for the bottom because that's how the bed attaches. Is it? Uh, yeah, that one right there would be for the underneath the bed. So separating the electronics compartment. Right. The, uh, right. Yeah. The bottom. And then we have side panels. Yeah. Again, covered the front door. and back, which is good. We've got. Doors, good. This is the back panel because this is where this bit, this cut out here is for where that filter thing goes on, isn't it? Yeah. So um, how much was this kit? Matt was asking. Uh, so the kit is 995 US pesos. Um, and, uh, and then to the UK, it's like 175 shipping. Because it's coming direct from China, and then you've got import fees on top and all. Yeah, and then you've got import fees. So Paul, yeah, so um, this is the three hundred and fifty version. So it is a little bit more expensive, but actually, to be honest with you, not that much price difference, if I remember rightly. So yeah. if I go now, hold on. One Two of the price. biggest advantages of these kits now is before. But before Rona, if you remember all those, you know, the, the happy free times um, when you can go outside. Um, when shipping on Alley used to be free for the most part on a lot of things. Yeah. You know, things off Alley. So building a, a V2 off AliExpress parts, you were looking at 1000 or $1,200 back then. It, yeah. it wasn't that bad. But now it's, you know, once you factor in everything has separate shipping costs now and things have gone up in price, it's the price has gone up quite a bit, unfortunately. And that's, the 2.4 design was actually a big redesign for the printer compared to the 2.2 revision because we tried to streamline the design and components as much as possible to try and get the cost down because prices were going up with a lot of things. So. Yes. I mean, so, and, and, and the main issue we have in the UK, change that camera back, there we go. the main issue we have in the UK at the moment is actually Brexit as well. Yeah. So we used to be able to ship from a lot of Spanish and Czech Republic warehouses. And used to get it um, and you'd get it inside of two, three days. Yeah, you know, it was, it was it was as if you were ordering off of Amazon. In some cases, you know, it was it was quick. Um, no duty to pay. Didn't have to worry about any of that. You just got it, brilliant, and off you went. 
Yep. Now, now. Don't worry about <laughs> import tax and everything else. Um, yeah, and and yeah. at the end of the day, I mean, Ch China at the moment, especially because of COVID, is experiencing some absolutely brutal tariffs on uh, on all of their shipping costs at the moment. Oof. Yeah, I know. I, I'm, we're, we're getting kind of for a long time here in Canada, stuff was kind of a pain to get because we didn't have a lot of vendors. Luckily, over the past yeah. about year to two years, a lot of local vendors have kind of popped up in country for 3D printing stuff. So things that we weren't able to get before easily um, are now a lot, you know, a lot more accessible. So let's start taking a look at some of these extrusions Ugh. so just a heads up i probably will have to uh head out in a couple minutes yeah just, uh, no worries man thank you very much here. for joining us so far obviously oh, much always a pleasure i just could hey, be interesting just if you want to take a look at half that stuff in the kit was actually full <laughs> <laughs> If you have any questions, just hit me up on the Discord. <laughs> oh, good Lord. You might regret saying that. Honestly, the Discord, I know a lot of people have, you know, you should be a proper form. It, it's very good for getting a response quick, though. I will say that. Yeah. If you so post I, in the I right channel. Yeah, I have joined it. Um, yeah. And I am, uh, I am, I have sort of uh, started to, started to look in it. Obviously. Check the pins. Check the pins. There's a lot of stuff pinned. So if you go into like each oh, of the right. channels okay, yeah. and then check the pins, odds are the common stuff is already pre-pinned. So, so I mean, I haven't again because I'm an I'm a moron. I haven't actually checked the instructions yet. So <sighs> how do you feel the instructions are? Is it something that I'm gonna regret um, not looking at before? <laughs> okay, so the 2.4 is it's actually the oldest Voron right now. All the other Vorons out there are newer. Um, so, unfortunately, the manual for the 2.4 is an older manual. Um, right. So, Voron, again, is a design group. We design printers and we put them out there. And the, the manual at the time we felt was sufficient because, for the most part at the time, the community was much smaller. And most people who are building Vorons have, you know, built printers before. They, they kind of, you know what you're getting into because you're, you're working with the same type of people. Now... Things have exploded exponentially. The Discord has like over 16,000 people on it. We're over like 2,000 serial Voron, Vorons right. and God knows how many unserialed ones. And uh, so now we're like taking and we're, we're actively taking a look at all the documentation to, uh, to just try and expand as much of it as possible because we now have a lot of people. Hey, I've never built a 3D printer before. Um, I want a Voron. And it's like, Okay, we got yeah. a lot of so, stuff. Okay, this is how you wire. This is how you crimp. This is how you solder. This is how you set up uh, 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 firmware from scratch. So yeah. that's why I've been doing a lot of videos there's, on like Clipper lately because a lot of people. One main, that's the one main part I'm worried about. So I, I, I've been using Marlin. Um, I used Marlin for the BLV cube. I've really only ever used Marlin. I used RepRap when I had a, I had a Duet clone. So I used yeah. RepRap for that. Um, but, uh, but outside of that, I've never used Clipper. So, so coming into it, can I share trouble. my screen now here? Uh, like at first Clipper will see a little bit daunting simply for the fact that you have to, um, you have to install it on a raspberry Pi. You have to, you have to do a whole bunch of steps. Okay. It, it's, but if like as somebody who has, you know, flashed Marlin before and compiled it, I would yeah. say it's roughly on the same tier of learning how to do that for the first time. Um, right. But to once be honest, it's, kind of, it's not it's not horrendous doing it. No, and it's you a know, lot better than having an advanced degree or anything to be able to figure out where everything is. It's just a bowler. Yeah, it's, it's a lot better now. The documentation okay. is getting better. Um, but it's still an open source free time project. Like nobody on the, the Clipper team... Um, Kevin does have a Patreon, but it's not his full-time job. So anytime you have a, an open source project where everyone's donating their time, for the most part, most people would rather work on the fun stuff than make manuals. It, it's just, unfortunately, yeah. it's a fact of life with free open source projects. So yeah, it is getting better. I, I have a ton of videos on my channel for Clipper specifically to get people through the basics. But like once you start using it, 
and you get used to it and you know how things work, trying to go back to a system like Marlin, you'll be like, why did I, how, how did I deal with this before? Like, I want to see here if I can actually share my screen. Um, yeah, you should do everything. Share. I have like four screens. Yeah. Share screen. So it comes up separately on the stream. One second. Okay. Okay. We're going to show that screen. There we go. There we go. Just okay. So, so this is, this is my V0 right here. Okay. So this is my V0 screen. Um, so right now, if I want to change my configuration and adjust my maximum acceleration, um, right so here. this is much more like rep rep in the yeah. in the it's all editable on yeah. so, so once it's on the device you actually do all your config on the device rather than doing all of it in vs code or whatever um yeah. and then uh, and then having to reflash it so once it's on there and you're connected yeah. then after that you're dealing with with everything after that so so here's so uh, again i mean when it comes to marlin there's a lot of people who constantly ask, can I have your firmware? And the answer yeah. back is no, because it's useless to you because I've got yeah. seven pink elephants in mine and no one else does. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's a very, it's a very specific instance of Marlin. Is it the same with Clipper where everything is highly customized or is it? You, you can go in and go from there. You can go in and definitely change a bunch of stuff. Um, to tweak it to your printer specifically. But a good thing with Clipper is because it's running on the Raspberry Pi, technically I could give you my config for my V2 here running on a Ras uh, um, what is it got? Uh, SKR Mini E3. And yeah. you could take that config, change the pin, and put it on your printer that's running a ramps. And then right. the config will work. Like you, everything right. will work the same. You just got to change the pins over. So like you have all these like default configs here for either existing printers or controller boards. So right. some printers, like if you have some random obscure, you know, uh, a JG or War A5S, right? So I, I that doesn't have a default Clipper config, but I know what controller it has. So I could take that controller config and just pin map it to a Corex or Cartesian printer config and add anything I want to add. Because if you want to add stuff, like a bed probe, it's simply copy and pasting the the block of text about bed probes, adding oh, in yeah. your pins and your your dimensions and whatnot, and then save and restart, and then you have it. And then if you screw something up, like okay, so that was PB ten. Stepper Y is step pin is PB ten, but I accidentally put PB eleven. Save and restart. And of course, right now my internet's going to die. I'm buying a new router tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Always pick It'll, the opportunity. I mean. Oh, hey, look! I, I screwed up. Uh, PB11 is used multiple times. Oh, oh no! I got to fix that. Like these Clipper interfaces will handhold you through setting up your config for the most right. part. Right. So, like for my um, when I installed the Octopus, I took my old config from when I was running a Taco Raven, which is a custom controller board we designed over two years ago. I took that config because I know it works on that printer. And all I did was just take all the pins numbers from the octopus and just copy and paste them in and just replaced all the pin numbers, hit save, restart. And then the printer's up and running and I printed an 18 hour print right after swapping a whole controller board. So I don't, I, I don't need to redo anything. Right. Anyway. Oh, did I change this? Anymore? So, so, uh, so what, what drove you guys to use Clipper? Is it just that you genuinely think that fundamentally it's, it's better than Marlin? Um, so thing is better. the reason uh, Clipper started um, here, I can turn off the screen, turn off screen share. Um, the reason was is back in ye olde days, um, before um, I'm going to have to fix that now. Um, before Clipper, we pretty much had at the time of the original V2, you had Marlin and you had Duet RepRap firmware, right? Yep. So this is back in 20, early 2018, uh, late 2017. So the thing was, you could run the original V2, uh, Russian Cat Foods original V2.0 ran on a ramps. It was an 8-bit ramps with another ramps slave to it so you could get enough pins to run the additional stepper motors. And it maxed out at 100 millimeters a second. So everyone knows Vorons print fast. So imagine yep. taking a Voron and limit it to 100 millimeters a second max on travels. Because there's so many motors going, it just could not handle it. So the other option was running a duet. 
So you needed a duet two, you needed the expander board, and the original, at the time, the firmware was a hell of a lot of nested macros to get the whole quad gantry leveling thing to work. So at the time, you either had a very slow, cheap Marlin machine, or at yep. the time, an expensive duet controller. And those were your only two options. And then all of a sudden, Clipper comes in, and you can slap a Raspberry Pi on your ramps and go faster than the duet. Because I, so I remember, so Lurge, we tried Lurge a while ago. Um, it was not a great yeah. experience, but yeah. um, but they they sort of they tried to. It felt like they were trying to do a very similar thing, where they were trying to make that front end where you basically configure all of your machine inside of the UI they give you and all of this stuff. Um, and it, it felt like it was trying very hard to be a to, to be sort of like a, a challenger to Marlin. Um, but Clipper's nearly as old as Marlin, isn't it? Like it's, I know Marlin uh, started Clipper's, out, like Marlin Clipper's one around started a few out years now. Something. Yeah, Clipper's been around a few years now. Um, I don't know exactly how long, but it's been around since at least 2017, I want to say. Um, it's really in the past year or two is when it started really blowing up. Um, and, and that's because it's, you could take any existing controller board and just make it go stupid fast. So it gives you so much more potential compared to traditional controller boards because traditional controller boards, everyone thinks like, I have seen it on Twitter when like some, whenever Clipper comes up, like, Oh, Clipper's not a firmware, a real firmware is run on the controller board. If anyone has any experience with like CNC machines, no proper CNC runs everything off one board. You have a controller running Linux of some sort, and then that's doing all the processing, and then it's offloading it to separate boards. So the right. way Clipper works is pretty much the same thing. You have a Raspberry Pi doing, you know, you can flex the one or the quad core 1.4 gigahertz massive processor in a Raspberry Pi, and you can use all of that for Clipper to do all your processing, input shaper, pressure advance, you, you name it, you could throw it at the Raspberry Pi. And then all it's doing is taking all the outputted commands and just telling your controller board, hey, do this, do this. And your controller board just needs to follow the directions. It doesn't need to handle any motion planning. It doesn't need to handle anything other than following the instructions. Another good advantage with that is you can plug in as many controller boards as you can into a Raspberry Pi if you need more steppers. So basically, the only thing you're limited by is the um, is sort of the, the amount of USB sockets you've got, really. Pretty much. So, like, for example, uh, Tallboy back there, um, it has a Raspberry Pi. It's plugged into an octopus. That's controlling the printer. I also have it plugged into an Arduino Nano that is controlling the screen because at the time, um, we we screwed up the design of the Taco Raven and you couldn't plug in a controller or a, a screen, so you had to use something separate to run the screen. So, because I'm lazy, I left that hooked up because, hey, if it ain't broke. And then also, say I want to put a... Um, um, like an enraged rabbit feeder, which for those that don't know, it's like it's basically like um, an MMU type multi filament extruder, right? So I only have one free driver on there. I can't run three separate drivers. Well, I could take another controller board that I have sitting around. I can literally take this Creality 4.22 whatever controller board, flash bar, uh, firm or, or flash clipper on it, put a config on it to control whatever else I want it to do, and throw it on the printer, and it'll just do it. So you can hodgepodge as many controllers as you want into a, a clipper machine, pretty much. Oh, yeah. That, that gives you a so, ton of overhead. Because I'm trying to think the last time where I saw something something genuinely custom. So not, not a, you know, a bastardized CR10 or, a, you know, a, somewhere where, like, they've done the G-Max where it's just got linear rails or something like that. Something, yeah. that, was, something that was genuinely original. And the last thing I can remember I is can me remember. and Martin. Yeah, do you? Well, I was going to say the one the TCT show. Yeah. So um, there was a guy who was in the E3D booth. He wasn't. He didn't work for E3D. No, it wasn't. So it was the Duet booth. It was the Duet booth. I didn't work for him, but he was doing a project, and it was basically, it was like a seven hundred on the Z, five hundred bed. The whole printer stood like six feet tall, minimum. Yeah. Minimum. And basically what he did is to try and combat because he was trying to go at ridiculous speeds. Yeah. And the only way he could combat the inertia 
was he had to um, he had to essentially create a corresponding shuttle system that yep, sat above I, it, so that as the tall right? head moved, the shuttle system moved in the opposite direction to try and oh, counter. And then it had a pendulum at the bottom as well, didn't it? Yeah, it was moving. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was, <laughs> it was the like most complicated thing I've ever seen. If I remember <laughs> rightly, he was he was using the prototype of the Duet Three, and I think. He had two of them in series. Oh, maybe he had, no, maybe it was the Duet Three, and then he had the daughter board, and he had two daughter boards because he was running because everything was running independently of each other. So he and it was lit, it was a shuttle system that was moving backwards and forwards to try and counteract the inertia to stop the machine tearing itself apart. It was about fifteen oh, miles of wire in it, wasn't there? Oh right. God, it was. It was obviously a work in progress. It was not a finished yeah. machine that he was trying to go for. That, that, that is nuts. But he had the full E3D tool change on it. And it was yeah. at ridiculous speed as well. Like, it was, yeah. it was crazy fast. Well, he did his tool changer before E3D did theirs. Yeah. So yeah, E3D hadn't changes, released their full, tool, their full tool changer yet. And, yeah, my God. I think it had, like, eight extruders on it or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I think it was eight. I think it was eight. It was loads, and again, he just like. I think, yeah, it was, it was, it was an incredibly complicated piece of kit. Like he'd really, he'd, he'd, he'd obviously really spent yeah. some, like, some time and effort. And I remember watching it, thinking, it's got to be an easier way to do it than that. Oh yeah. And then I saw, and then I saw your video the other day of you doing input shaper on input Clipper. shaper is is not quite the magic bullet that everyone thinks it is. However. It's still really damn good. Um, the yeah. fact that you can, it, it basically will allow you to either print with faster speeds um, that you normally can for the same quality or print at slower speeds for better quality. So like most of my printers, um, I still run like 3000 acceleration for like outer walls, but for like my infill and whatnot, yeah, I'm sending that at like 7,000 acceleration, yeah. which... I remember back when I was like setting up my first printer with Marlin, it's like acceleration 500. Oh wait, I'm going to push it 600. And it's like, yeah, absolutely. Now it's just like, yeah, 10 K go send it, whatever. Is that, is, 10K. is that, I mean, I'm, I've watched your video and I've listened to the explanation and I still don't understand how that works. Like, so <laughs> what it's like, doing is basically it's explained it's, it really well. And I yeah. still don't get it. <laughs> So what it's doing, is, the easiest way to do it is to slap an accelerometer on the tool head and it measures what frequencies cause vibrations, okay? So it'll move yeah. the motors and it'll make the, the humming noise and you'll, your desk will shake if it's not bolted to the wall, but it'll measure the vibrations the printers make at different speeds or, or um, frequencies. And then what it does is it basically uses that to cancel out your vibrations from movement. So it's kind of like how, you know, if you've ever watched some movie where like, oh, they're making a noise and we have to play the opposite noise and we can't hear them or whatever. It, it's right. basically that you're, 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 you're inverting the frequencies to cancel out their deflector dish or whatever. It, it's doing <laughs> science. It's doing science. But yeah. basically it's canceling out the vibrations the printer would normally make. And it, because you've tested it, you know what vibrations cause the problems. It's, uh, honestly, I mean, I've 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 watched the before and after videos, and I've watched some of the speed tests of people once they've once they've calibrated pressure advance and the um, and the input shaper. And my God, but the before yeah. and after shot is insane right out of the gate, anyway. Um, but like what it's producing, like the speeds yeah. that some people are getting. So that guy that did he did his logo. And he did the logo at like 700 mil a second with like 30,000 acceleration. Now, admittedly, he was doing, you know, he was only doing a few layers, but it was 100% infill. And he did it like it worked. And this thing had to have like a high flow hot end on it, not because he still doing it all on a 0.4 nozzle. And it was just, yeah, the speed this thing was going at, it was going so quickly that his camera was recording at like 60 frames per second or something. And it couldn't catch every layer. That it was doing. Oh, well, I think we've lost your audio there, Nero. Or have I broken something? No, Mike, can you oh, hear? Yeah, I, I, I can't hear Nero. Oh, okay. 
There we go. There we go. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I didn't charge my uh, headset or my uh, lav mic from the stream last night, so it died. <laughs> but yeah. Um. Yeah. This is all. Th the funny thing is, this is all stuff that we've had in the CNC world for years. Like this has been known stuff, and now it's finally people are you know slapping it on at home. 3D printers, basically. So there's all kinds of other stuff that'll be interesting when it starts coming down the pipeline. But you have to remember, printers now are built a heck of a lot better than they used to be, too. Um, a lot of yeah. people are still trying to... Sh like, I'm personally completely against trying to chase grams with tool heads. You see a lot of people, like, building these super, super lightweight tool heads. And uh, I don't think they're really needed as much as they used to be because we're not building printers out of acrylic panels anymore. True. Yeah. We, we have modern True. firmwares that can handle it. Like uh, the tool head on my V2 weighs like half a kilogram, and that'll do 10K Excel, 300 millimeter a second prints all day long. So, yeah. Well, here's a question. So I'm now on Z rails. So I built my I built my frame, which I definitely shouldn't have done that to just then. Um, <laughs> that's no longer square. <laughs> oh no! Measure it's corner to rails. corner. Yeah, but, um, I I am actually going to have to head out now. Um, no I worries, have to man. Make lunch. Thank you very much for joining. So thank you very very much. Uh, anytime. Has it already, I mean, Nero's got more subscribers than we have, but definitely go and check out Nero's channel. He has many videos other than just Vorons, um, and does uh, does some fantastic things with Clipper and with the new stuff coming up. Um, absolutely, check it out. Like and subscribe. Yeah, it's been fun. You guys enjoy the build. Um, yeah. Any questions? Hit me up. I'll be 170. Really enjoy the build. Yeah, right. I feel like we're going to enjoy it. <laughs> we're going to break this. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> See, you later. <laughs> See you later, man. Thanks. Right, guys. So as you've just seen, I now have a. One second. I now have a square frame. So that was crazy easy. So basically. The way it works is um, is you put a screw in the corner of these pre-tapped um, where uh, of these pre-tapped extrusions that slots into this part of the frame, and then there's holes in each corner for you to stick a screwdriver through and do up the screw. That's it. Frame done. Really, actually sturdy, and. I mean, square, because the so these extrusions are made pretty, pretty well. And uh, do you want to share the, the pic on screen? It might alarm you, Jerry, that I'm probably not going to show that picture <laughs> on stream. <laughs> um, so I've now just got to try and figure out which ones of the. So I am looking at the instructions, just as an FYI. Um, all I'm trying to do is figure out whether or not these rails are any different from each other. So let's see me rails 18. No, all right. All the rails are identical. That's pretty good. So with mics, when we were building the BLV cube, again... There was a lot of different rails and sizes, wasn't there? There was a lot of different rails. There was a lot of stuff that we had to mess about with. And because... We, so we, were, we weren't we were building a BLV cube just for the just for the nuts of it. We had, we had parts left over from... Um, we had parts left over from uh, the wasp name, from the... Um, from the S4 build that we played about with, so we were uh, we were we were sort of we were trying to build a frame that would match the bed, rather than buying a bed that matched the frame that we had, um, and that meant that we had to buy like some really weird size custom rails, um, which definitely didn't help on the price. Yeah. So I can tell you already that having seen the cheaper Chinese rails, um, I can at least vouch that these are genuine high-win blocks. Um, 
which I'm going to need to get some, uh, I'm going to need to just get some paper towel so that I can wipe up just a little bit of the shipping grease that has gone everywhere. They're definitely <laughs> Oh no, <laughs> that's going to be a sod to get back on. I mean, they're branded as Highwind Rails, to be fair. They've even got, so one of the ways you can tell is, again, you probably won't be able to see it on the camera, but every other gap has actually got Highwind etched into it. Um, I knew, do you know what? I knew I was going to do something, and I was going to, and, and it was just, I was really hoping that I wasn't going to do it in front of Nero. <laughs> And literally 10 <laughs> seconds after he's left, it's like, oh, you know, you're not really supposed to take those carriages off. Oh, well, we. Oh, please don't lose all the ball bearings. Please don't lose all the ball bearings. Gentle, gentle. Nailed it. Yes. Oh. <laughs> What's the odds the little bearings have fell out? So they haven't. I haven't lost a single bearing out of that. Boom. Right, so just bringing up the uh, thing. M38. What are you? No. There's going to be a lot of them. No. No. They look like M38s, don't they? Just about, yeah. So the bearings... M38s, perfect. Uh, the bearings on these, honestly, if they come out, oh, they just take forever to get back in. Like, they actually take forever to get back in. They are, they are painful. Like, I've, I've cancelled builds when those ball bearings have come out before now. I'll just be like, well, all the ball bearings have fallen out, so I guess we're not doing that. <laughs> we'll use dogs instead. <laughs> yeah, we're going to use something else. So these all go on with T-nuts. Well, that was the first one dropped. Worst is the flooring's grey. <laughs> yeah, agreed. Well, if, have, the, uh, bearing, if the bearings had to come out of that, they would never have been found. If the bearings had come out of that, I'd honestly have just bought a new rail. <laughs> I'd have just said that has gone, and we need another one. That that would have been a, that would have just been a flat out nope. That's uh, that's that's uh, I'm not dealing with that problem. So just getting some of these in here. The same, I mean, it's not like this is our first build. You know, it's not like it's the first machine that we've built. It's not like it's the first kit that we've built. Um, so I'm interested to see how this does end up comparing to the other machines that we've done. You know, things like the BLV cube or when we've built that, when I built that Homer. <laughs> That took <laughs> took way longer than a kit normally would. It might, it might be the same amount of time as it takes to build this. Yeah, it's like two and a half hours. I hope that's square. It is, ish. I'm pretty confident it's square. Oh come on! Oh, I've nearly nearly finished that little mini badger. Yeah. When did that go on? Um, when you left earlier. Jesus, that's quick. That's quite big. I know it's a little one. Oh, I'm do a little one first, just to check the uh, interfaces and stuff like that on the supports before I did a big one. Right. Okay. Gotcha. So there is a little. Basically, there needs to be a five mil gap. 
between the bottom of this and the bottom of the um, the bottom of the thing. There we go. So, Carl, we are soon going to do a competition for the mini badger. Um, and I think we nailed down a pretty decent prize yesterday, didn't we? Sorry about that. Yes, we did. Yeah. Yeah, so, we... Uh... Go on. It's going to be a printing the mini badger and painting it, if you like. It's not going to hurt your chances. Um, and there is going to be a prize for the best one. There is indeed. So at the moment, we are reviewing the Fucos Odin 5. And we will be looking at giving that away. And that will be the prize. So you, so if you, you might have you, seen if the live stream. One, you'll be getting a really quite a nice little printer. So you see the live stream we did on it a couple of weeks ago where it just wouldn't print. We spoke to Fukus, and within like two days, they sent us a brand new board. Yeah, from China in two days. It was it was ridiculously quickly. They like overnighted it with uh, with FedEx. So I reported it on the Friday, um, and on the Friday we uh, so I think it was Friday night we came off. I reported it to them Friday. They had a tracking number it was for like 10 me. o'clock at night, wasn't it? You reported it. Yeah, yeah. They had a tracking number for me Saturday afternoon. And then Monday morning. Yeah, Monday morning, it turned up in the post. I was I was genuinely I was I was blown away at, at how quickly they um and since then how quickly they did that. Gotta say the results that, that printer has come out with are amazing. Yeah. <laughs> They are genuinely yeah. amazing, the quality of this printer. Yeah, it is really good. It is really good. So, the Mini Badger is on Thingiverse. What is it listed as? Is it listed as Mini Badger? Yeah, I think so. I'll grab the link in a second. Yeah, so see, it's what you see yesterday, Matt. That's what came off the uh, the Fucos. That was the mini badger, or that was a bit of a bigger one. Yeah, I don't think I maxed out the build volume with that one, but um, I went sort of as as big as I did uh, with the time that I had because I was I was obviously on timeline to make sure that we could film the. Um, to make sure that we could film the what's the name at the weekend, we had to film the review at the weekend. So I wanted to make sure that I could uh, that I could do that. Well, I'm just tuning. I'm just tuning, like fine tuning the goofu, which you might have seen. We've got some more videos coming out of that soon. Um, I'm just fine tuning that profile because I'm going to be doing a decent, like a decent sized badger in that in ABS. And that's one of the things I really liked about that Gufu is that it was just as easy to print ABS as it was PLA. It was just a case of put the lid on or take the lid off. So, guys, for anyone who hasn't already, Carl Fenton has his own uh, his own three D printing channel that he's just started. He started it with his kids. And uh, and the content is really driven by his kids, so um, they are. It's going to be it's going to be a, an interesting one. I think Carl would agree. They're uh, they're a group of people who are, they're a group of kids who are going to melt some brains with their questions. But uh, it's going to be. I think it's going to be. Um, imagine like watching Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> Where you get like a couple of questions that are legitimately about the thing you went on about, and then it'll be like, "Hey, so uh, what do you think about butterflies? Do you think they're arrogant? Because I do." <laughs> I should imagine it would be a lot like when I'm asking you questions. Yeah, very similar to yeah, yeah, like three 3D printing questions, and then just uh, do you think dogs 
like like hats, or do you think when they wear them, they just don't know what's going on? Or would you rather have hands for feet or feet for hands? Yeah. What was that one you text? So I was at work, and um, God, I can't even remember what I was doing. I was in a meeting, and it was quite important. And Mike just texted me saying, if spiders were the same size as dogs, would it be better or worse? Because on the one end, they'd hardly ever get in your house because they'd be giant. But and on the other end, coming. if they did get in your house, you've got to move. Like, like he lives there now. And I was like, it is the middle of the day on a Tuesday. <laughs> like, what am I meant to do with that level of information? I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> I don't know what I'm supposed to like, I don't get it. I don't get what I'm meant to. I don't know, Mike. Stuff. I don't, what, what? What? And then just going, I don't know. I was just bored and we're thinking in the van. It's like, okay. <laughs> I think we need help. All right. Almost got the rails on. I hadn't really planned on building this. Um, but here we are. I mean, obviously, I was going to build it eventually, but I really was going to uh, sort of plan out how I was going to build it a lot more than I have done in the last 13 minutes. So I think I'm just going to keep going until uh, until I get sleepy. I'm already sleepy. Number one. <laughs> Oh no! Oh, where did it go? Oh no! Yeah, that's gone forever. Okay, well let's hope they gave us some extras of these. I'm trying to put a relatively even number onto uh, onto these. Like, I don't think it's necessary to put one on every. Like, I don't think it's necessary to put one on every hole. Like, it can't. You can't need that much, surely. So I'm doing the. I'm doing one like every third, every like third hole, and that's my. That's my official take on how many needs to be a part of this. <laughs> and I'm basing that off no information from anywhere. Yeah, Cole, post a, post a link to your channel. I don't think he can. Oh, can't you? I don't think you can post links on the... Um, What's the channel name, Carl? I mean, I remember, but I want to make sure that you do. All right. That is all of the Z... Thingies on. Look at that. That's all the Z rails, and the frame is still square. Amazingly. Just check. It is as well. Like it is actually square. Christ. Uh, right. So that's all of that. Right, so the next one is where we start getting on to um, building with parts, and all of my parts aren't yet printed. So we're going to end the live stream there, guys. Um, and what we'll do is once all of my parts have finished printing, we will set up the next live stream, which will probably be sometime during the week, and we will crack on with trying to build the rest of this lovely Voron. Thank you very, very much to everyone who has joined us. 
Anyone who's interested in this kit can go to AliExpress, look for the Blue Rolls store. Um, the link is in the video description, so feel free to go and check that out. Big, big thanks to, hold on, there we go. Big, big thanks to uh, Nero as well for joining us and, uh, and talking us through some of the history of Voron. Uh, it's really great when different guys in the community can sort of work together on content like this. So thank you very much for that. Um, this is going to be something of an adventure. So don't forget to like and subscribe because there will be many, many parts to this. Thanks very much for joining us, guys. We will see you very soon. See you later.